Oh, we've got the Sebring on the ramp and we're going to use an old piece of equipment that I've found and see if we can analyse the engine with some period equipment uh, that, was, that was used when, this, when these were new. Right, let me introduce you to the AM test, piece of test equipment, made in America. In H202 West Middle Avenue, Kalamazoo, Michigan, made in the USA, model AM640. And this is a, a test equipment, probably from the 70s, maybe even the 60s. I don't know if it's working. Uh, but I picked it up at a car boot, which is like a yard sale. There's two ways of connecting it, um, or two leads to connect it, a positive and, a, and an earth. And there's some instructions printed on the top here. It tells us what it'll do. I don't know if I can zoom you in a bit. So we could test the RPM. And we put the black on earth and the red on the output from the distributor that goes to the coil. So that's the one that switches on and off as the points open and close. We could do a dwell test. Now a dwell test is telling you the angle that the points are closed. I'll do a diagram for that. And um, if we wire it the same way for these two, um, we can get a points resistance test. So that's telling us the resistance in the points, which is reducing the power of the output of the distributor to the coil. And we could do a regulator, voltage regulator test. And that's where we, we put it on the alternator or the dynamo and uh, test that. So let's go through it one by one. We'll start with the RPM test. So we'll be fitting the black lead to the earth and the red lead to the output of the distributor. Now we need to set this up so we can, there's RPMs, there's two scales. There's one to 1200 and naught to 6000. So if we go on the low RPM, oh I see, that's the low RPM. And then we'll set the high RPM and rev the engine and then we'll set the dwell and read the dwell and then we'll see the points resistance and then we'll rewire it into the alternator and get the, get the volts. So we have to set a number of cylinders. So it's three, four, five, six or eight. So that's three, that's four. So I'll wire this up and then we'll start the engine and see what happens. So I've connected the black lead to earth and the red live lead needs to go to the output of the distributor which goes to the coil. So there we are. So we'll go back and see what happens now when we start the engine and get the um, RPM. Right, I've wired it up. I'm going to set it on high RPM first. And we're three, four, five, six, eight on four cylinders. So let's start it up and see if the needle moves. Oh right, it's working. So we've got about 600 RPM. Let's put it on this scale, see if it comes up to about 600 should be. Oh, it's more accurate. So it's 720, 40, 60, 80. 720 RPM. Set it on. Hold on a second. That's high, oh, that's. Okay, that's low. seems to be working fine doesn't it so let's try dwell angle and that'll be on this scale here and these are degrees so there's with a four cylinder engine there's 90 degrees between so that's 54 degrees we're measuring let's finally see the points resistance oh, hold on a second 
Now we have to do that with the engine not running. So we'll check the uh, book and see what the dwell angle should be. Distributor. Dwell angle should be 51 degrees, plus or minus five, so 56, 57. So we are open a little bit, we're closed, hold on, it measures the closed angle. So if we're closed for 54 degrees, the points are a little bit tight. So here's the distributor with the points open. There's the four cam loads, and there's 90 degrees between each of the cam loads. But when we do dwell test, what we do is we measure the point at which the points are closed. So if that's rotating round, it gets to this point, and the points close, and they're closed here, and then they stay closed here until open here. We're measuring that, that's your dwell angle. How long they dwell being closed. And we've got 54, so our points are a little bit tight. If there was a slightly bigger points gap in there, that would reduce the angle of how long they're open for. So I hope that explains it. Any questions, give us a shout. I'll just talk you through the diagram. There's your power supply coming in. There's your points open and close. Go to the side of the distributor where we hook up the uh, meter. That's the HT lead going out, getting to the top of the distributor. And I uh, hope that's clear. So to go to points resistance, we've got the engine not running. Now if the points are open, we'll get nothing. So we'll get nothing. So I'll turn the engine by hand. Right, we've got a breeding here. This, we're now on points resistance, so it's measuring the resistance between the points when they're closed. And we're well in the green. Can you see that? It's cool, isn't it? So the next one is to measure voltage output which will be over here. So I'll wire it up to the alternator, get it running, and then we'll see what we're getting in terms of voltage coming out the alternator. Right, now we've done the RPM test, the dual angle test, and the points resistance test. And now what we need to do is rewire the meter so that it, it uh, gives us the output of the alternator. So we leave this on earth, and we need to come onto the back of the alternator. You can see that. That lead there is the alternator lead. So we'll. I think we're on it. So we're on that. So that should read the voltage coming out of the alternator now. Right, I've now wired it up with the black lead to earth and the red lead coming up to the output of the alternator. And that effectively connects it to the battery. So we're getting 13, 22, 4, 13.6 volts without anything happening. So let's start the engine, see what the, the um, alternator is putting out. Look at that, at idle we're getting 14, 15.2, 15.3 volts, nearly 15.4 volts. That's just going up. Pretty steady, isn't it? So that was fun, wasn't it? We were really using a really old piece of equipment, probably, that's 1970, that's 30, 40, it's 47 years old. Amazing. So we are able to use a piece of old equipment on an old car and uh, analyse the engine. And just to recap on the results we had, we, the RPM meter was working fine. We were idling at about, uh, about 1,600, I think, was it? The dual test, we've got 54 degrees, the book says 51, so we know the points are a little bit tight. The points resistance test was in the green, so that was good, and the voltage was putting out plenty more than it needs to charge. 
So uh, what a lot of fun we've had with an old piece of kit that's still working well. What a survivor. Oh, like and subscribe if you like these videos. They're just for fun.